Hey, in this episode of the Taylor Series Vlog, I wanted to talk about a problem that crops up from time to time and can be a real motivation killer if you let it. But if you know how to handle it, you'll be just fine. The problem is, what happens when you get the right answer with the wrong work? Before I begin, I want to separate out something, and that is the need to get points and the need to be correct. Yes, points are important. They influence our grade, which influences a number of other things. The problem there is that because points are so important, we can fall into a pattern when we're so focused on that that we actually miss out on the learning opportunity without knowing any of the details of your personal situation, the class you're in, and the relationship you have with your teacher, I can't make any comments about how that should play out. Don't let the pursuit of points get in the way of your learning. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the situations where this can happen. The first situation is what I like to think of as dropping a plate that just doesn't happen to break. No, the plate didn't break, but that's because of luck. This is a situation where you have the right answer, but wrong work. A way of looking at it is this. You want an understanding and a process that's going to get you the right answer all the time. Any entrepreneur will tell you this because they really need to get the right answer every single time. Both their reputation and their product depends on it. So what do you do if you find yourself in this situation? Well, I would try to learn as much as I possibly could about what the correct way is. This can be difficult because you've already learned it and you've been told you're wrong. And this means that you're going to have to go back and redo something, which is always a frustrating experience. But hang on, it's only frustrating if you let it be. It's actually very pleasant if you learn how to do it right, because that is a wonderful feeling. When you have an understanding that encompasses the problem you had, it's much less likely that you'll make it again. Not only that, it just really feels good to be like, oh, now I get it, now these pieces actually fit together. There's usually some wrinkle that never sits well with you and then causes you to make this mistake. And once you smooth that out, whew, that's a nice feeling. The second scenario is one that I consider to be a lot more interesting. And this scenario is, your work was correct, but it was different than what the teacher wanted, and so there's some kind of conversation that happens. This can be a very fun conversation, because you can actually put your head together with your teacher and say, hey look, I wanna discuss the thing that I did, and I wanna see where it differs from your pattern, and see if we can't come to some sort of understanding. Because in this case, you may have invented a new way of doing a problem, and that's kinda cool. I personally love that sort of thing. Here are some things to look out for during that conversation. How long does each process take? Which one's faster? How many operations does it take to do the two different methods? Is one more efficient in terms of how many little tiny calculations you have to do? If that's the case, then you may want to stick with that one because every time you do a little calculation, it's an opportunity to drop a sign or to get a wrong answer or to add two and two and get five. Hey, happens to the best of us. Another thing to consider is how clearly can you communicate your thoughts using this method? That's actually a big deal, especially when you're collaborating with other people. If one method is much clearer than the other, then that's points in its favor. The fourth thing to look out for is what happens when your teacher says, I'm going to build something on this particular method. Listen for that one, because that's actually important. If your method avoids some key understanding or key principle that is going to be used later on, you want to make sure you get that key understanding. That does not mean that you have to abandon your method but it does mean that you want to also learn the method the teacher is trying to teach you because it'll be useful later. So the third situation is the most tragic perhaps. And this is the situation where your teacher essentially says, it's my way or the highway. And you feel like your process still gets you the right answer, it's just as efficient, so on and so forth. In this particular case, it can be unfortunate. If you're a teacher watching this, I would suggest maybe opening your mind and seeing if your student came up with something really cool. Because what you may be looking at is a fantastic learning opportunity. If you're a student, you might just have to grin and bear it. But I can say this, hang on to the method that you used. Make sure it's just as polished and make sure it still gets you the right answer. Outside of the classroom, maybe that's what you do. And who knows, maybe you've come up with something really cool, much more efficient, that can be used later on down the line. I tend to favor the art of creation, but that's just me. So, to recap, if you made a mistake, try to figure out what that mistake is and learn from it. If you didn't make a mistake, compare notes with your teacher to see which method might be superior, looking out for time efficiency, operational efficiency, if there's something else building on top of it, and something I forgot. And how clearly you can communicate your, and how clearly you can communicate your thoughts using that method. And three, if it's my way or the highway, then learn their method, but keep yours in your back pocket if it's a solid method. That's it for this vlog. Thank you to all my patrons who are supporting me in doing this. I couldn't do it without you. You can expect a video within the next week or two here. I've been spending a lot of time working on this video, 
and I've been involving things like balloon twisting and new special effects, and it might not seem like it's a huge deal, but it definitely has made my life a little more happy learning how to do it, and hopefully it'll make a better video. Either way, thank you to Aragami also for hosting this, and with that, I shall bid you adieu. Yet again. Adieu. A doodly do. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. If you really like the video, come on over to our Patreon page where you can get involved and see all the cool stuff we're doing.